Hey everyone, morning, morning. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. God is amazing all the time, all the time. God is amazing. OMG, I have not done any blogs in like forever, in a long time, you know? Sometimes I kind of get bogged down with things and get a little distracted. But um, what I really want to talk today about is my perspective on relationships. You know, sometimes we see a lot of persons getting divorced and separated and all of that and we blame the devil and uh, you know I hear a lot of church people say about the devil is attacking marriages that is true to an extent but the truth of the matter is to me and this is my perspective this is my personal thing on it is that sometimes there's a scripture that says if two cannot agree how can they walk and uh, what has happened is that sometimes especially women we're guilty of that we are in love with the idea of marriage we don't love and we dis we detest being alone so what will happen is that the next best man that seems suitable seem um we take on that individual and we get married and all of that without really you know kind of checking to see if really are we compatible are we do we have that kind of a symbiotic relationship do we have that uh that relationship that is flowing nicely that's right do i love him do i love her am i attracted to him am i am i attracted to her do i want to spend the rest of my life with this individual that i look down the road you know based on how am i attracted to how he speaks how she speaks how she looks what she eats what she wears you know her attitude her disposition his attitude his disposition all of these things that we look for in relationships and what has happened is that or sometimes our minds or our hearts probably get a little clouded and we jump into situations that really was not intended for us relationships that really were not meant for us it's a reality you know and i'm not saying that you don't have the enemy trying to attack relationships and all of that but in a lot of instances is really not the enemy is that really that relationship was not for you it was not for him it was not for her and because of that we have a lot of breakdown in families because sometimes we don't check the background of the individual when you get in this relationship now you get married you feel happy when you realize the individual probably can't have children uh it's a beater a womanizer somebody who verbally abuse you you know whether it's a woman or the man as the case may be when i'm speaking i'm speaking on either side uh you're just not attracted i remember what speaking to one individual the individual said to me i'm not even attracted to her eyes she couldn't turn her turn on her husband you know and uh, uh he allowed you know some persons to say okay you two belong together and he didn't even love the individual you know it's just the whole idea of marriage and sometimes unfortunately sometimes some churches contribute to these things and it does affect the breakdown of family you know um it's a very tough situation it's very difficult because i think a lot of us are not socialized holistically in and in an healthy way and in the correct way in many instances of choosing the right partners you know what i'm saying and sometimes you just choose a partner and we see the breakdown and people stay in it and suffer and die they die within you know and because of the church they don't want to look bad to the neighbor they don't want to look bad to the church they don't want to stay and suffer in silence and uh i remember i said to somebody recently that i was the kind of individual who as I hear you getting married, I, you one of his me getting married. To how frightened I was, to how happy and, you know, just excited and everything. And it's like God had to kind of slow me down and say, yes, man, marriage is honorable. But if it is not, I've got it's really not honorable. No, what happened is that, is that my ears started to tune into that very first section. You know, and it kind of, it's like God just talking to you through when you go to the weddings. And I, I was listening to, like each time I go, I, for some reason, it's like God kind of, in tune my ear to the very first thing that the uh, marriage officer will say to the individuals getting married so you look at the woman and the man you know and simultaneously he will say do you know of any just reason or just cause why both of you should not be joined together I'm paraphrasing I don't know the exact thing that they say but it's as though he's saying because if there is an unjust cause you know an unjust reason God is not with it God is not honoring this marriage so really it's like marrying in an empty shell so although you might be saying all of these woes and saying all of these things if god is not in it is is a it's 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 really almost just call it null and void you know and many persons many many persons get into relationships that is just not right for them they get married to the person who is not right for them 
you know they marry the wrong individual and it's and it breaks down the family life because what has happened now is that you're afraid to get divorced and I'm not one advocating divorce and so people don't like that but the reality is that um, what has happened is that because you don't want your like the church to look down on you or your neighbors or whoever it is to look down on you you stay in it and you suffer 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 you know because of the the fact that you two really weren't meant to be together you know and what has happened is that human beings I shouldn't say human beings a lot of us are not taught about choosing the right partner having healthy friendships that's why that scripture is important you know let me tell you someone you are Christian or not reading the Bible is important it really teaches us about life a lot of people don't know things because they they're not in the know knowledge is power you see once you have knowledge it will it will allow you and create behavior change and deciding that you're not gonna stand for certain things because if you stand for anything you'll fall for anything if you if you don't stand for something sorry you'll fall for anything my apology all right so it is important that we I would encourage everybody to read the Bible because I love is you know it's a lot of things after a while I'm like oh my god this is in the Bible so a lot of principles you know, it doesn't have anything to do with like you're just saying, God, 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 God. I'm just talking about the principles of living, of living a healthy and a wholesome life. Now, I'm not for one saying that you're not going to have the relation, the good relationships with that, which I admire greatly, that will not, will not, um, will, the great relationships will not have troubles. They will not be devoid of troubles. However, when a man builds his, his or her house on a solid foundation, on solid rock, you see, when the storms come, you're able to withstand it in many, many instances. That's why they said the wise man build his house upon this on the rock it people think it's just only in maybe financial situations or so but it's also in relationships which is a big part because we have to relate to to each other as human beings in your regular friendships you know uh spouse all friendships and these things you have to build your house on solid rock you know because I look around and I'm seeing a lot of relationship they go sour you know people married and divorced how much how many how many how many times and all of these things because they just choose somebody they don't they don't want to be alone they fear being alone or they fear somebody labeling them as as maybe you know going um, in, in a certain direction which they're not it's just that they want to be careful in the kind of partner that they choose you remember it's a lifelong situation in most instances you know or many instances you know and you're living with this individual <laughs> you're living you're waking up you're going to bed you're coming back home and all of these things and you don't want a case where when you're I remember talking to somebody a lady said and because she was being abused she remember the days when she would hear the grill opening and she would be shaking like a leaf before the man entered into the house I mean that relationship ended and I mean you know because sometimes what has happened is that we have been just start look here you're reaching a certain age now time you get married you know time you have your children you just rush and say all right you just pick somebody fast and when i say pick somebody i'm you i remember a man saying to me and i had to ask him like about five times because i was i thought it was a joke he said that you remember the days when a man would just jump in front of the woman and say i'm married to you i guess if him say that she's single you know and this is church related i'm talking now you know single and maybe look like she you know going up in when i say going up in age could be late 20s early 30s and all of that that she didn't just jump in front and they get married i mean when i heard it i thought it really was a joke but i can't because you have those marriages that are arranged you know and what has happened is that when you get married you realize that every single thing about this individual you just don't like you just don't like it could be even just the way how he may say something how he dresses what he does or what she says or what she does how she dresses they say you know what you like it might just you just found it find it a pet peeve I remember years ago I was watching a program and some relationships were I guess on the verge of being you know dismantled they were getting divorced and all of that and when you heard the reasons you probably think it's oh maybe it's an abuser womanizer or something like that and it wasn't really that you know it was a certain behavioral traits and attitudes and those things eat away at you and people don't want to admit it they what they do they just try to sugarcoat it with all of the so-called bigger problems you know like beating and cheating and all of these things and you have other things that will equally destroy relationships you know Especially if you're not attracted to the, to the person sexually. You have persons who get married and they're not attracted to the individual sexually. You have persons who get married and they don't love the individual. 
you know, they get married because they don't want anybody to label them, they start to label them that, or they realize, as I said, they're getting old, you know, you want to make sure, you, or you're in love with the idea of marriage. So you just say, okay, I know this person, they look, you know, I have some money, you know, you know, so bad looking and all of that. And can I also tell you that sometimes you may see somebody, you can be a good person, the other person is a good person, and you just don't, you're not compatible, you really don't belong together. And it is something that people need to understand not because you're good and he's good because sometimes when people's relationships go awry they assume that one is wicked or both persons are wicked not nothing to do with being wicked or evil you can be good people i mean we're not perfect but you just don't belong you don't have that compatibility that what you need for a relationship you know and uh, when sometimes persons get and they realize my gosh this is is as though they feel like they married a total stranger you know and sometimes you could get all the counts in prayer and it just not, it, it just, you know, and something does not fit. You have a piece of puzzle and you try to force it in. It look like it would fit, but it just does not fit. And that's just the reality. It sounds very hard and it sounds difficult, but it's something that we need to, I think we need to educate people on so that we can, as best as we're able to lessen the, the divorce rate, let us put it that way, the dismantling of friendships and relationships. And when I'm speaking, I'm not only talking about intimate relationships, you know, this also goes for friendships. A lot of people sometimes get into to friendships, regular platonic friendships, because a person may, they like the skin color, the hair, how they dress, they have money, they have some social say, so they jump in a yes. And it's the same thing with, with, with um, really well, once you do it with regular friendships, you're gonna do it with marriage. And when you get in, you say, my God, I hate this person's attitude. I dis I, you totally detest it. The person treats you as though you are insignificant. You're not valuable. Speak to you anyhow. Verbal abuse. A lot of these things are going on in relationships. That's that is uh, it's it's a it's basically equally deadly as um physical abuse. It's just that physical abuse can literally kill you. You know, physically, because your body not supposed to be battered like that. You know. And uh, it's a we, we face these issues because of how we have been taught. You know, that by the time you reach us a certain age, you should be married and settled alone. If you're not married, well, in Jamaica, I mean, you know, that uh, common law situation is <laughs> okay, so to speak, you know. Uh, but you should at least have a child and you should be with somebody. Especially because they don't want people to label them this or label them that. And you know what I'm talking about. So you quickly just jump in on a relationship and, you know, when you find yourself not happy, and that's how a lot of certain things happen in relationships a breakdown begin because it's not built on a solid rock it is not you can't pray it away you can't whatever it is if you have sand you can't just you know if you already built it on sand you can't just put rocks on it like that it doesn't work like that and many people suffer in silence they're suffering in silence because they're afraid of what church will say they're afraid of being judged. Human beings hate being judged. You hate people. So, 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 so. What you know? She go on like she did and look there. You know? And I'm not one to... I'm not one to... I, I, I don't like the breakdown of any... Not No form of friendship. Once it is a healthy one. Once it is a healthy one. I'm also not in the support of an unhealthy friendship. Whether or unhealthy relationship. Equally. I am not. How many of us may see, for example, you have a good friend and you see your friend dating, um, whether the man dating a woman or a woman dating a man, and you just know that they don't belong. Because if you're a good friend, you will see it, you know. There's just something just that's just irking you. And we're afraid to talk because we're afraid if we mash up the friendship, we're afraid to so them gonna say, we are mash up them life and mash I mean, mash up them life, you're preventing them life from being mashed up as as you know, I have to say it that way. You know? And we are, we have become so afraid. It is as though a, ch a mother and a father has a, a child and they just allow the child to grow without teaching them any values. It's the same sort of thing when you watch an unhealthy relationship. Because people say, no, no, I say, no, yeah. Next thing I say, you mash them up. You probably prevent them from dying physically. It sounds away. I'm telling you the truth, people. And it is something I've been thinking about as I got older. And I'm so happy that it's as though I've been maturing. My, you know, God has allowed me to mature myself into understanding really that relationships it's important it's 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 needed it's something that's paramount to every human being because we're not created as an island to stand alone but it's the right relationship and right relationship isn't they're not devoid of troubles and trials but again as i said once you build your relationships on solid rock when two can agree and when i say agree 
I'm not talking about you and I agree that one plus one equals two. I'm talking about having that that kind of cohesive relationship. Res you know, that kind of respect, that honor, that value, that love. That and, and similarities in some sense. Yeah, we have differences because the two of us cannot be the same. But once you have these things and the things that are important to you, because every human being likes different things, you know, every human beings, every human being value different things. You know, sometimes what you can tolerate in a in terms of you know our flaws, another person, another relationship can't tolerate it. They just, that's just, they're just not made up that way. You know, their psyche is not made up there. They're just not built that way. Doesn't mean that you're bad and that you're wicked. We're just different. In we have to be different. All of us are unique beings. We have similarities as human beings. You know, but we have to. We are different. But each person will know the kind of uh, so-called, you know, flaws that they can handle. You know what I mean? There are some universal things that we generally won't be able to. I would not encourage anybody, especially if it's going to be damaging to your mental, emotional, and physical status. You know, because sometimes you get married to somebody who, you know, who will beat the daylight out of you and it will just continue until one and another end up killing each other. You know, so I'm, I'm encouraging persons, evaluate the kinds of friendships that you have, evaluate the relationships that you have. Be careful of the, for those who are single, think carefully, pray about it. You know what I mean? Look at, you know, the kind of. Um, for women, you know the kind of man that you want. When I say you must put your, your, your the list of qualities way, but keep your standard high. Keep your standard high. I'm not saying put it way up in the sky passes like you're looking for an angel. It, it does not work like that because we're all flawed beings. Just as how the man might be looking for something, you might have quali um, uh, behavioral traits that not pleasing. Right now, not yet befitting for a marriage or anything like that. You know? So it is important. And I would encourage. Sometimes people may say, "How oh, you going to know if you married the right or the wrong person?" You'll know, you know. Pray about it. Not only that, I personally, this is my personal view. Again, dating is important. Not just dating, courting. Get to know the individual. You talk, have conversations. About that, no silenting on a text and, and all of them things. They only, you know, get to know the individual. Yes, you talk on the phone. Yes, you text, but talk in person. Look in the person's eyes. Listen how they speak. Look how they form their words. Their body language. Their actions. Every single solitary thing count people. Nobody push it aside. And don't make anybody telling you that your biological clock, clock biological clock, it's ticking. You need to up and do this fast and all of that. I'm not saying to just put that aside, but I'm saying, boy, it is better you make it go and tick than it tick tock and tick out when you go jump in or something that you really should not jump in. You know, and you're in problems. You know, there's a song by Karen White. She says, she sings the song, I'd rather be alone than be unhappy. It's a, it's a terrible thing to be unhappy in a relationship. Terrible thing. Can you imagine a couple that you really don't love the individual because you only went in it because of security, money, this or that or the other? Sometimes some women I get money, but they might get some lick under them skin. And I don't support women hitting men either. Women, let me tell you something. Men, whether they mug or fat in between, generally most men are made physically stronger than women they're made physically stronger than women so when a man fire back a lick on you <laughs> you know so sometimes you have to be careful of the things that you say and do to men and men to women so i'm simply saying to you that if two cannot agree they cannot walk and when i say that i'm talking about if you don't if you realize that this relationship is not for you it's not for you it's just as simple as that we're afraid to admit that, but it's a reality. That's my personal view. I'm not going to get married to somebody that I realize is not for me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm encouraging people, especially those who are single, you know, be careful in the partner that you choose. I'm not going to tell somebody who is already like married or, or engaged or dating somebody for just, uh, what well, you check it out. What I would encourage you to do is to seek counseling. You know, from a reputable counselor. Now somebody again a fly by night talk will give you the reality. Sometimes some persons will go for marriage counseling and as you go, there are certain things that they do, I'm sure, certain questions they ask, and then when they do it, they say, Look here, it's either you're not you, you two don't belong together, to, you know, based on my assessment, or it's not yet, or something, and sometimes you go against what you have been told. It's a good people to take sound advice. We can't allow the the so-called bliss 
of uh, marriage and the relationship to cloud our judgment, the right judgment. And then when you go and say, why didn't I listen to the counselor? Why didn't I listen? And then you suffer in silence. You're afraid to leave because you're shame. Or you have children and you don't want to, uh, you know, devastate them. But when they see you living like a gang goat, you might not be living like a gang, but they see, the, they see the, the pain inside of you because you're really not into the relationship. And then the same thing follows them. You know what I mean? So I don't go and tell you what to do once you get in there and I can't tell you that. But you have to make that decision. You know? So for it's, it's, it, it's easier to speak to somebody who is in a single state. You know? Because they don't choose nobody yet. Even if they're dating them, I would encourage you to be careful. I remember somebody was telling me a lady was getting married. You might think it's wicked, but it is not. Just pair herself and the person turmoil. Getting married right here in Jamaica. And they had the night before thing. Uh, what you call it? I don't remember what you call it. Maybe bachelorette and bachelor party. Right? And uh, I don't know what had happened. And the man went on and on and on in public towards her. <laughs> you must be mad. I will get married to this man. She called off the wedding. The wedding was the next day. And I would, I would trust me. <laughs> I would say to her, she, good move. So, cause can you imagine him doing that and they have not married yet? They haven't got married as yet. What would have happened afterwards? Eh? Can you imagine what would have happened? You have to look at these things. It's a reason for for signs and and all these things, people. We can't. We, I would not encourage people to just overlook certain things. Do not overlook them. They're fundamental to the rest of your life. Sometimes. Sometimes people get married and when they say that it's like them like them you wonder to yourself, my God, if I the devil themselves they're married to on either side to how their life just crumble and go down to nothing because they did not belong together. It's a reality. People want it, don't want to admit that. But it's a reality. It's just some people just married to the wrong person. They're with the wrong person. That's a reality. It's so terrible if so. You know? And it is sad because it contributes heavily to the breakdown in relationships and then sometimes you will go to certain churches and they say lord the devil attacking me no because sometimes a lot of them a lot of the the persons who are dating they, they got the warning signs whether through friends through family through their, their own intuition you know that feeling that comes over you and you saw things and you just say you know i don't like this this is not something that i want to live with for the rest of my life you know so my dear people think carefully before you get into regular friendships and intimate friendships all right we have to try and listen the breakdown in family life friendships and all of these things as best as we're able to that's all i'm simply saying build your house on solid rock remember if two cannot agree you cannot walk and that's a that's a fundamental point you have to dissect it it's there read your bible read books all right and choose the right partner you pray about it you, you work at it you know get the advice from friends and families and outsiders too you know, and if you go counseling and they say not no or no, take advice. All right? Have a beautiful day. Take care, people.